Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Rundell and I'm going to be walking you through uh, the geocaching lesson on Minecraft Education Edition. And I'll try to post some links in this video as well on how to build a basic lesson built on this Education Edition. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the geocaching lesson from the Education Edition site. And when you do, it's a pretty old lesson. So you're going to have to scroll all the way down to uh, 1025. And you'll notice that that game is set in survival. So we need to let it load up. And when you enter the game, I will show you a few of the things that I have done. Oh, we're getting some lag, so I might have to cut this a little bit. All right, so the first thing that you notice, you are facing a chest and an NPC named Atreyu. Uh, you'll also notice that we are in survival mode. You notice that by the hearts and the hunger bar. And you also have three extra uh, pieces of inventory, which you can access by tapping the zero button and every time you access the zero. So for this, you will need a map. So let's go ahead and click on right click on the map. And when I do, you notice that in my first inventory slot, I now have a map which also gives me my coordinates in the top left-hand corner. Um, if you're a teacher and you don't want to kill your NPC, you are going to need to turn on cheats and turn off your world builder. So we're going to turn off cheats, and I'm going to resume, and I'm going to go to ability at P, nearest player world builder false this will allow me to not hurt my npc as well as click on the link which is opening up on my second screen i'll drag it in can i drag it in there no is it's popping up on my second screen um let's drag it in there for you you should get this link right here which gives you your first set of coordinates it also tells a little bit of a narrative for um, your NPC. So let's close out of that and let's maximize our screen. All right, so that's that's our NPC. So how do we get these things? And, and um, how do we have our map, our first inventory slot, our camera, and our portfolio? So the first thing that I did was I set the fixed inventory slot uh, one, I set to a camera, or maybe an empty map, sorry, empty map. The second fixed inventory slot I set to our camera, and the third fixed inventory slot I set to our portfolio. So I'm not going to reset those now, but those are the commands that I use to give myself those three fixed inventory slots. I also uh, made sure that I set the world spawn exactly at the point where I'm standing now in order to be facing my NPC. So again, I did set world spawn and I used, I don't know my X, Y, and Z coordinates, but there's a neat feature in Minecraft called the tilde, which is next to my one. So I'm going to hit shift and that um, little squiggly next to one tilde, tilde, tilde. So that means my X, Y, and Z coordinates relative to my position. I can hit enter and it knows that my world spawn point is 342, 65, negative 852. So that's where I am now, All right? I then went in, I uh, did my text for my NPC, and I also created a link. When I turn off World Builder, you see that when I click, oh, I set it to false, sorry, true. Now, there is the link that I embedded in, and I, and I could, if I wanted to, I can edit the text. All right, so, so that is basically how we got started here. And what I really did was I generated a regular world. 
And I just kind of flew around until I found a nice little setting and I found this nice little village. And I liked this village. And these, these do generate randomly in Minecraft. I liked this village because it was kind of the scenic area. We have some woods over here. And in fact, if you do the math, you'll find that your first cache is hidden next to this stump right here. And if I dig down... I'm kind of cheating because this is my map. You see your first cache, and what you're supposed to do is use your uh, camera to take a picture. Now, everyone struggles with taking this picture because of the, uh, the chalkboard. So in order to take the picture, if you're aiming your camera at the chalkboard, you do need to hit shift and then take your picture. Otherwise, you can place your camera on the floor and take the picture. There we are. All right, so I would do the math. I would get my second set of coordinates. Broke my steps because I'm in creative mode. And I'm basically, from the village, I'm going to uh, go back towards the village. I'm going to do the math. And I'm going to fly over to this other scenic area. Again, shouldn't be terribly far from the village. Uh, where we get to these mountains. Oh, look at that. A naturally... Occurring dungeon. I didn't realize that was there. We get to these dungeons, and I believe there is some lava flow going on. And I thought that this would make a great location for our second geocache with this waterfall and lava flow going on. It was just a beautiful place to spawn. And Adults always struggle with this because I put a little gap right there. And so it's not really parkour, but you have to make sure that you jump. Otherwise, you're going to fall and you're going to have to help your kids get out of there by either nerd, nerd blocking their way out um, or helping them get into creative mode or you can nerd pull out. And that'll give you your second set of directions. We also give our hero some uh, better armor because he's going to have to fight some zombies. And then finally, our last set of coordinates kind of brings us back towards the village. And where's my buddy Atreyu? We go behind the village. And there should be like a mountain back here. We're going to go to the top of this little mountain. And we see our third cache hidden down there. Is it? No, this is not my third cache. Where's our third cache? Uh-oh, we have a creeper. Here's our third cache. Sorry about that. So if I was doing the math, I probably would have had a little bit better luck. And so we get down into here. We have a little pressure plate. And there should be zombies in there. Let's open up our doors. And boom, we have completed the quest. So we have made it through our geocaching lesson. Now what I love about this lesson oops, is that you can uh, adapt it. You don't just have to make it a math lesson with coordinates. You could do a lot of different things with this lesson. You could say the NPC could give you a a uh, quest where you read a passage from a text and if you believe the main idea is this you go to this set of coordinates and if you believe the main idea is that you would go to a different set of coordinates um and you know with command blocks and with code builder you could code in some pretty awesome features like uh maybe you teleport the person back to the beginning of the game or something all right so you, you really have a lot of options with geocaching and how you want to send your players on a on a quest and you know you could build it into a choose your own adventure uh you could build it in with any content doesn't have to be just math doesn't just have to be literacy so i hope that this little walkthrough uh helped you out and i'm gonna get going so thank you so much